Good afternoon. May we request everyone to please all stand for the invocation to be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Let us all be aware of God's abiding presence in our midst. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God our Father bless us. May God the Son heal us. May God the Holy Spirit enlighten us and give us eyes to see with, ears to hear with, hands to do the work of God with, feet to walk with, and mouth to preach the word of salvation with. And may the angel of peace to watch over us and lead us at last by our Lord's gift to the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may now be seated. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. Today marks the sixth installment of our Media Leadership Lecture Series, and we are diving into something incredibly interesting for this afternoon, that is health communication. For this event, we've gathered speakers from diverse sectors to shed light on various facets of this crucial topic. To kickstart our program, we are honored to open with a message from the Secretary General of USD, Reverend Father Louis R. Coronel from the Order of Preachers. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and participants, a warm welcome to the sixth installment of the Media Leadership Lecture Series presented by the USD Office of Public Affairs in partnership with Unilab. We are gathered here today for a truly significant event as we delve into the intersection of media, communication, and health in the Philippine context. The Leadership Lecture Series endeavors to provide pertinent discussions on the state of our national media landscape, which is designed to foster critical and holistic approaches in addressing the evolving challenges and opportunities of our time. Today, we are proud to focus our attention on a matter of paramount importance, advancing community wellness through a multidisciplinary approach to health communications, a Philippine perspective. Personally, I'm very happy with this topic because before entering the order of preachers, before entering the priesthood religious life, I was a physical therapist. Yun. Kung may, may mga CRS po ba rito, taas nyo ang kamay nyo. Yun, mga CRS, no? And, um, um, hindi na po ako active ngayon as a physical therapist. Uh, probably not anymore healing the physical, but more on spiritual. I am now a, probably a therapist. Probably. Yan. And health communication is both a science and an art. Integrating evidence-based methodologies with creative approaches to convey vital health information. On the one hand, health communication is a science 
for it relies on rigorous research, behavioral theories, and epidemiological data to understand how communication influences health outcomes. And this ensures precision in crafting messages and designing intervention, facilitating a strategic and informed response to health challenges. On the other hand, health communication is an art, manifesting in its ability to make complex health information accessible and engaging. Creative elements such as storytelling, visually appealing design, and culturally sensitive approaches transform factual data into relatable narratives. And this artistic dimension recognizes the diverse needs and preferences of the audience. Acknowledging that effective communication extends beyond the mere dissemination of information. It fosters a deeper understanding and motivation for a positive health behavior. The synergy of science and art within health communication not only informs but also inspires, making it a powerful tool for public health promotion. Our gathering today, therefore, is not only a lecture but a call to action to recognize the role of each one of us in promoting and improving holistic health of individuals, communities, and society. In a world where information is abundant, but not always easily accessible or understandable, the role of effective health communication becomes very, very important. And this lecture is a testament to our commitment to fostering a healthier society by bridging the gap between complex health information and the diverse communities that we serve. On behalf of the very Reverend Father Richard G. Ang of the Order of Preachers, the Rector of the University, may we empower individuals to make informed decisions and lead healthier lives. Welcome to the Sixth Media Leadership Lecture Series. Welcome to the University of Santa Tomas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Father Coronel, our Secretary General, and most recently, our Therapist. Thank you. So, in our lecture series, History, we've witnessed powerful dialogues between our university stakeholders and esteemed guest speakers. Today, our lecture series is taking a dynamic turn with a two-part program focusing on health communication. To give us an overview, let's give a warm welcome to Assistant Professor Jorin Rocamora, PhD, the Director of the Office of Public Affairs, as she gives us a sneak peek into what promises to be an enlightening and thought-provoking afternoon. USD Secretary General, Reverend Father Louis R. Coronel, OPEHL. UNILAB Assistant Vice President and Head for External Affairs and Social Partnerships, Ms. Claire De Leon Papa. USC Administrative and Academic Officials, Ms. Janice O'Cry, Director of Counseling and Career Center. Assistant Professor Marie Narcida, the Director of Academic Programs Quality Assurance Office. Assistant Professor Anna Ruby Paez, Director of Cited. USC Guidance Counselors. Members of USD Hospital, USD Academic Staff, esteemed guests, our dear students, and online participants, good afternoon. We are pleased you could join us once again for the sixth installment of the USD Media Leadership Lecture Series, an educational forum that aims to take a proactive stance in the current state of media that encourages the Thomasian community to have relevant and responsive information regarding the emerging technology-driven news media landscape. Originally launched in 2017, included among the keynote speakers in previous installments are Philippine Institute for Development Studies Research Information Department Director Dr. Sheila Shar. Philippine Communication Society Director and UST Journalist and Program Coordinator, Mr. Felipe Salvosa II, Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Manila, Office of Communications Director, Father Roy Belen, Journalist, Mr. Atom Araulo, 
Limitless Love Chief Executive Officer Ms. Joey Cruz, Break the Fake Movement Founder Mr. Gabriel Brillones Jr., Catholic Media Network President Father Francis Lucas, Lahe Philippines President Jean Magsaysay, former ABS-CBN Digital News Media Head Ms. Karen Puno Igaya, and GMA Documentary Hosts Mr. Cesar Apolinario and Mr. Jay Taruk. Reliable and effective ways to promote community wellness and public health remains at the forefront of our minds. As we continue to navigate the new normal, but there are online and off offline discourse spaces that remain under the fog of misinformation or distance from the public due to field-specific jargon. Therefore, it is all the more vital to support and amplify informative and socially responsible media voices that can empower individuals and the greater community to make well-informed, healthier choices, develop a strong sense of health literacy, ease access to currently available health services, and initiate conversations on what more can be done to improve public health practices and policies. USD produces around 2,000 competent, committed, and compassionate healthcare workers every year. But community wellness remains a shared responsibility for all. So even those of us in different career paths are encouraged to be responsible and healthy citizens. We can do this not just by keeping ourselves updated, but also by thinking critically about the health-related information we come across or share with others and by being considerate of the health conditions of the people around us. This year, through our partnership with Unilab, we have the honor of listening to multidisciplinary perspectives from experienced and adept media leaders in health communication. We will be joined by the Operations Director of Mount Grace Network of Hospitals, Mr. Ruben Basa, the executive producer of MedTalk, Health Talk, and Health Talk from CNN Philippines, Ms. Christine Bernadette Sassi, the USD Research Center for Health Sciences Supervisor, Professor Consuelo Suarez, MD, PhD, and educational content creator, Dr. Winston Creones Tiwakin, more popularly known as Dr. Kili Manguru. Our trusted panel moderator, the veteran journalist and health advocate, Ms. Jean Castaneda, will guide us for today's discussions. May these inspiring encounters with our resource persons lead us to embody even more veritas in caritate, or truth in love. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rocamora. So this year's theme is no coincidence as we foster strong relations with our industry partners. This year's MLLS is done in partnership with Unilab. By centering on health communication, our collaboration with Unilab underscores the critical importance of understanding the core elements, challenges, and best practices in this field. Without further ado, let us welcome Ms. Claire De Leon Papa, Assistant Vice President and Head for External Affairs and Social Partnerships of Unilab for her message. Reverend Father Louis R. Coronel of the Order of Preachers, the Secretary General of the University of Santo Tomas, and our physical therapist. Assistant Professor Jareen T. Rocamora, PhD, the Director of the Office of Public Affairs of the University of Santo Tomas. Our partners at the Public Affairs Division of UST, to our esteemed guests, heads of the different colleges and students, Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon. 
We are grateful to all of you for giving us an opportunity today, not just to talk, but to start a conversation, steer your interest, and hopefully move you to be active participants in the various issues of health, which is one of the fundamental rights of every Filipino. A few months ago, when we were discussing with the public affairs team in preparation for this talk, I ask if it is possible to invite other colleges that are not medical or health related. The issues on health are not limited to health practitioners alone. As we dig deeper, as we take the time to look closer, and as we analyze the state of the country's health from a different lens, we will find a lot of economic, political, sociocultural, and even spiritual aspects that affect the health of the Filipinos. In all of these, communication plays a vital role. There are a lot of health issues now that need our attention. Sudden spike of HIV incidents among teens, increase in teen pregnancies, mental health, malnutrition, obesity, younger population getting sick, sick of heart diseases and diabetes, lack of healthcare workers, inadequate hospitals in a lot of areas, no medicines and equipment in health facilities, Filipinos unable to pay for health services, especially for a catastrophic disease such as cancer, among others. Transforming the health-seeking behavior of one person is not an overnight job. How much more of a family, particular sectors such as those who are considered to be part of the base of the pyramid, an indigenous group, or the whole nation. It requires consistency, strategy, resources, and most of all, the will to disrupt. As a public relations practitioner, I strongly believe that disruption in the form of various communication platforms is a powerful weapon that we can use to surface the more critical considerations for people to prioritize health. And speaking of reform platforms, the social media has enabled us to access and to spread information at lightning speed. Dati po, hindi ba? Ang chismisan lang sa kapitbahay ang labanan. Ngayon, kanya-kanya ng chat groups. Hindi po ba? Dati, iniintay pa nating i-announce officially sa radyo o sa TV kung may pasok o wala. Pero ngayon, mismong schools na ang nagde-declare sa Facebook at sa Viber groups o mismong netizens na ang nagpo-post kung gaano kalalim ang baha sa Espanya. However, just as in anything, social, med social media has also enabled massive disinformation which poses an additional challenge to promoting good health. Being at the forefront of healthcare in the country, Unilab is not just a pharmaceutical company marketing hundreds of brands nationwide. We are also continuously collaborating with the government and the private sector, including the academic and faith-based organizations, to reach out to communities for community-based health interventions. And in these efforts, one significant realization stands out. Communicating health is not just about training or educating. The more important and primary needs, primary, need is to listen listen to validate assumptions listen to understand the situation it is through listening that we are able to see clearly what needs to be done and how it should be done in partnership with other like-minded organizations to be able to make a difference today in partnership with your university we hope that this media leadership lecture series on communicating health will catch your interest to listen, help you find your purpose, and make you more committed to make the future of the next generation be much brighter and healthier. At ang sabi nga po ng isa sa mga kumpanya under the Unilab Group, mamaya po sa open forum, huwag po kayo mahihiyang magtanong. Muli, mula sa pamilya ng Unilab, maraming salamat po at magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Ms. Claire.
With those messages, we truly set the tone for an enlightening, impactful session ahead. I invite everyone to take advantage of this opportunity to listen and engage with our invited guests because we are about to embark on a knowledge-packed program this afternoon. And so, we begin the first part of our program where we will explore, explore the link between wellness and communication in the Philippine perspective. To help us understand this connection, it is my honor to introduce our first speaker. Opening the sixth installment of the Media Leadership Lecture Series with his talk, The Practice of Health Communication in the Philippines, we have with us the Operations Director of the Mount Grace Network of Hospitals, a network of 21 hospitals in key urban areas nationwide. Grace Hospitals is a part of the Unilab Group, and one of their partner hospitals is Fe del Mundo Medical Center. Our speaker is the General Manager of Fe del Mundo, where he assumed the post when the hospital was designated as an exclusive COVID hospital at the start of the pandemic in March 2020. Prior to joining Mount Grace, he served the government for 27 years in both the executive and legislative branches. His longest stint was with the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, or PhilHealth, where his last post was that of Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. He also worked with the Department of Health and the Senate Committee on Health and Demography. Our speaker is a graduate of Ateneo de Manila University, where he majored in political science, and he took his master's from the De La Salle University with a focus on development studies. And today, we welcome him with our Thamashan hospitality. Students and guests, with a warm round of applause, let us welcome Mr. Ruben Basa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that um, kind introduction. Um, Father Coronel, um, Dr. Rocamora, AVP Claire, um, to the admin and faculty and students of um, the University of Santo Tomas, isang magandang hapon. Um, I'm asked to discuss about health communications in the Philippines, and I'll be discussing this from the perspective as an individual, from a community, and later on, I will be telling stories about how some perspectives on communication at the national level. Um, when I was about your age, um, and I would accompany my mom to the doctor, um, actually within, this, uh, within the halls of um, USD, my mother used to be a lecturer here at the College of Education here in USD. And I would accompany her to her doctor. And um, after the consultation, I would ask my mom, o oh, ano sabi ni doktor? Um, binigyan ako ng resete, eh, pero hindi ko alam kung bakit. Then the next time I would accompany my mom to the doctor, she would say, o oh, ano sabi ni doktor? Ah, pinalitan yung reseta? O oh, bakit daw? Hindi ko alam eh. So I don't know whether my mom would not understand her doctor or my mom would refuse to understand um, her doctor or the doctor was unable to communicate effectively to my mom. But the thing is, um, there was some disconnect between my mother and my doctor. And it was an oft-repeated scene that I had when I began to work um, in the hospital level. Um, you could just imagine that um, the challenge of communication between an individual patient and his or her doctor, and amplified that with several um, healthcare practitioners and several recipients of information at a community level, let's say a barangay, let's say a municipality, or in the case of a hospital, multiply that several times, several thousands of times at the national level, and you could see the difficulty and the complexities of health communication. But the success and the failure actually of a health program hinges on an effective communication campaign as I would be discussing later on. As earlier mentioned by our Reverend Father, health communication is both a science and an art. Um, 
we are not just educating our, uh, our intended audience. We just do not want them to um, learn new information, health practices, but we want specific actions. We want specific reactions from them. That's why it's a very both a challenge, a, a challenging perspective to communicate to our clients. And it is in that perspective that um, um, you've been hearing a lot about the universal health care, um, which is the, actually the framework of the national government in reaching out to all Filipinos. It's a new law that was passed in 2019. And in one of the major salient provisions of the law is about communication. And in that particular law, it says that within two years of the effectivity of the law, at least 1% of the budget of the Department of Health should be allocated to communication. That is how important health promotion, health education, and health communication is in um, imparting and realizing the goals of universal health care. As earlier mentioned, I'll be discussing about um, how we are implementing communication. So this, I'll just be sharing stories about how we have been implementing communication at the field level. Let me just tell you about my, our experience in Fidel Mundo. Again, this is actually not a serendipitous, it, it's not a coincidence that I'm actually speaking in front of the UST group um, on the anniversary of Dr. Fidel Mundo. Yesterday was her birth anniversary, and this morning we had our um, anniversary celebrations in Fidel Mundo. It's the 66th founding anniversary of Fidel Mundo along Banawe, Quezon City. And when I was reading the story of Dr. Fidel Mundo, um, during the Japanese occupation, she actually established um, a hospice right here in the university grounds. And for which reason, um, Dr. Fidel Mundo is also known as the Angel of Santo Tomas. So it's not really a coincidence that on her birth anniversary, um, I would be speaking to the community of uh, the University of Santo Tomas. So anyway, um, Fidel Mundo, as mentioned earlier during the introduction, is one of the 21 partner hospitals of the Mount Grace Network. Um, just to, say, to name a few, um, here in Quezon City, we have Capitol Medical Center. So we have VRP, um, Victor R. Potenciano, um, along EDSA. We have Manila Med, Medical Center Manila, and Medical Center in Paranaque. And all the way from north, we have Lorma in the north, and as far as Zamboanga, we have Ciudad Medical Zamboanga. So, I was at that time, I was still with um, the head office of Mount Grace Hospitals, and um, there were discussions at that time at the national level. We would not want our patients in the different, in all of our hospitals, um, not to, to be afraid of to go to the hospital. Ayaw na nila pumunta sa mga ibang hospital kasi baka may COVID. So the intention of uh, Mount Grace, and it's also a part of the call from the Department of Health, to designate certain hospitals as COVID hospitals. And in response, um, ang ginawa ng Mount Grace, it designated Fidel Mundo Medical Center not just as a COVID accepting hospital, but as an exclusive COVID hospital. So walang ibang magiging pasyente kung hindi COVID patients. Imagine, this is March 2020, and you could just imagine the, the fear the anxiety of people with COVID at that time. So it was a very challenging period for us in the hospital to communicate to our publics. First is to our patients. It's March 16. The president has just declared the first of the queue. We have the ECQ, the MECQ, the... Um, several community quarantines. Kakadeklara lang ng presidente ng ECQ. Tapos, walang, ang, sa, ang mangyayari is, kung ano yung mga pasyente dyan, March 16, we only are giving you until end of the week to be with the hospital. And we will be transferring you to another hospital. Again, another perspective, ang Fidel Mundo is a pediatric hospital and we are very known for a good neonatal ICU. These are long-staying patients. Patients, child, 
babies who have been um, who would usually stay in the hospital for two months or three months and we are also near the Philippine Orthopedic Center again our patients are long-staying patients but this message was by the end of this week we have to move you into another hospital that's the first challenge second challenge how do we communicate to our doctors that we could no longer see non-COVID patients? How do we tell our ob our surgeons, our pediatricians, who are not catering to non-COVID patients? That's a, that's a challenge that we would be, that we face at that time. And of course, there was a question, after COVID, how do we revert back to being a general hospital? I'll tell you how we were able to um, surmount those challenges because we were faced with attrition. Attrition of nurses is already a concern, but to tell our nurses na hindi lang tayo magkakaroon ng COVID patients, kundi lahat ng pasyente natin magiging COVID, how do we tell the, page, the parents of our health workers and so forth? I'll continue my story later on on that. But for the next part would be just again a set of cuento on how we did health communication. This is siguro a throwback 30 years ago uh, when many of your parents have not even met. Pero I would just like to tell you stories about one of the, um, I could say, um, an exciting period in terms of health communication um, in the Philippines and um, um, you may have heard of the name, Dr. Juan M. Flavier, who later on became, became a senator. And I would like to tell stories, kasi ang talagang naging legacy niya is communicating health to the people. Ang kanyang tagline, let's do it, let's do it, D-O-H, let's do it. And ang kanyang mantra, actually, I was part of the team of, of um, Secretary Flavier when he came into the D-O-H. Ang mantra niya sa communication is one, it should be media friendly. We cannot communicate if it is not media friendly. It should be exciting. It should be innovative. Kung hindi lang tayo medyo boring na ito nakikipag-usap, paulit-ulit lang yung stories, then nobody would listen. It has to be doable and it has to be current. Some programs na ginawa ni, ni, ng DOH at that time which really excited the nation. One is siguro naririnig niyo pa, Yossi Kadiri. Yan yung kanyang mascot ng Yossi Kadiri. It became up to now still a current na mascot ng DOH. Ginawa siyang kanta ng, um, ng one of the bands at ginamit siya sa, sa, nung sa music video nila ng Inuman. It was very exciting at that time. After ng Yossi Kadiri, nagkaroon ng panibagong mascot ang DOH, si, um, ayan, Enteng Ebak. The DOH was very, was very irreverent at the time. Um, Enteng Ebak, um, that is a campaign for cholera. Merong ang campaign for cholera was TKO cholera. The TKO, of course, knockout, tanggalin ng cholera, but it is also a brilliant acronym for ways on how to combat cholera. Too big, clean water, kubeta, uh, sanitary toilet facilities, and o oresol, or um, um, rehydration for children. It's too big, kubeta, oresol. It's a very it's, um, simple um, um, words, TKO, pero natatandaan ng mga tao. Another campaign ng DOH at the time was for ng, ta, tinatawag na SSS. And um, for that, I clearly remember, nakipag-usap si Secretary Flavier sa SSS, the Social Security System. We would like to use your acronym um, because we would want you to bankroll our program. We would want you to finance our campaign na SSS. So, tinanong na social security system, anong campaign yun, secretary, tungkol sa SSS ba? Hindi. It's our new program against breast cancer, which is sariling salat sa suso. And they were able to convince the SSS to finance the campaign, and it became one of the important 
programs of the DOH. Meron din yan yung micronutrient, um, um, yung FIDEL, nandiyan yung uh, FIDEL. And there were another, uh, other campaign programs, but what I would like to focus on is yung isang programa nila, which is called Oplan Alice Disease. And I, the information that, you would, that I would be sharing with you would show how communications was able to um, make the program successful, how it became successful, and the results afterwards. Ano yung Oplan Alice Disease? May problema tayo sa vaccination, sa immunization, etc. The program ng DOH to designate two Saturdays in a year to be known as Oplan Alice Disease. And for this, the government mobilize all resources. Um, even before public-private partnership, ang mga Jollibee centers became patak centers para baglagyan ng mga patak centers. Ang um, si DO, si Secretary Flavier talked to MNLF for safe passage para sa mga communities para ma, para uh, makapasok. Even the NPA, meron nga dun, um, there was one story, pumunta si Secretary sa NPA, sabi ng, ng NPA na dun sa Kuta is, Secretary, hindi ka ba natatakot na mabaril ka dito sa Kuta ng mga NPA? Ang sagot ni Sec is, I'm 4'11, mahirap ako barilin. Kasi maliit lang si Secretary Flavier. And the story was, goes was, he was allowed safe passage. And the NPA allowed, um, allowed um, the implementation of Oplan Alice disease. Even the Catholic Church, um, who were also, um, medyo nagkaroon din ng issues with Secretary Flavier because of his um, campaign against uh, on condoms and the use of sa reproductive health. Um, on the four Sundays leading to the Oplan Alice Days, Oplan Alice Disease Days, uh, they were designated, sinasabi sa pulpit and during the masses about Oplan Alice, Oplan Alice Disease. That is how effective it became. And the program for Oplan Alice Disease was so successful that at, by the end of the first year of implementation alone, 98.5% of the target beneficiaries were given vaccination, and the World Health Organization declared the country as polio-free a year after. So for the next, ito isang study that came out later on, ano yung naging success factor, why Oplan Alice disease became a success. And the main factor that they, they identified was mass media. So naging success ang Oplan Alice disease primarily because of communication campaign more than anything else. Logistics played a big component. Um, the support of the medical community is very important. The support of the local government units, because it was 1992, the evolution was already starting. Pero ang importante, the key component was mass communication. And what you could see in the graph on your screen is the rate of vaccination after Oplan Alice disease. While there were still highs, um, particularly in the years 2004, we actually declined since then. From 2012, bumaba na yung vaccination rate natin. Again, meron mga nagsasabi, um, vaccine hesitancy was a result basically of Dengvaxia. But even before Dengvaxia, as you could see um, in the graph, talagang bumaba na yung um, vaccination. While vaccination hesitancy is, um, um, is not unique to the country, pero sayang yung opportunity because if we were able to sustain the momentum of Oplan Alice disease in, 2000, in the early 1990s, because people, the Filipino people, will believe in vaccination. People, the Filipino people believe in immunization at the time. If we were able to only sustain the momentum, sustain the communication campaign, which the country started in the early 1990s, then um, we would not have been in this situation. It is very disheartening that in the last report, the Secretary of Health, Secretary Orbosa reported that the Philippines is actually one, the fifth country in the world with the most number of 
um, children with zero um, dose for vaccination. Tayo may pinakamaraling fifth na bansa na may maraming bata na may zero vaccination. Ni isang bakuna, wala. And in the Western Pacific region, the Philippines actually is number one. In the Western Pacific region ng World Health Organization, tayo may pinakamaraming bata na ni isang bakuna ay wala. Samantalang 30 years ago, we had 98% of our target population vaccinated against the sixth major vaccinated diseases. So you could just see um, in a span of 20 or 30 years, the effect of communication on public health campaign, um, the success, and it's an, in, in, in our inability to sustain the momentum of such campaign. So going back from two or three years, I'd just like to mention to about three or five lessons from the COVID pandemic. These are more recent lessons, recent stories that many of you can also relate to. One is, um, ito yung isang challenge natin sa, sa health communication is that yung health literacy. No matter how you communicate, ang isang challenge natin is yung basic knowledge of our people in terms of um, the um, healthcare, this is prevention. And in the first and so far the only study on health literacy, it says that 51% of the population ng bansa ang may limited health literacy and only 8.25% have excellent health literacy. And pag tinignan natin, this is a study um, done um, 2018 to 2019. In NCR, ang taas ng limited health literacy, but in terms of excellent health literacy, surprisingly, it's mas marami ang nasa Visayas kesa sa NCR. So if we are to talk about challenges in communicating to our people, this is one area that we need to address first. Some lessons from COVID. Well, one is um, we are all basing our information on science. Kailangan ganitong gawin, ito yung gamot, etc. But one thing is science is evolving and um, facts change. Not because mali yung sinabi natin, because there are new information available. The data, the health communication that we are giving right now is based on the best and latest available information. Pero pag nagbago, if we are not able to communicate it very well, they might um, question the science, they might question the information that we are having. Like for example lang yung masking. Early on, around March, April 2020, the statement was, Let's reserve the N95s to the health workers. If you are not sick, if you are not um, vulnerable, if you are not a health worker, don't mask up. Pero later on, around mga April, everyone should mask up. Hindi naman sa dahil nagbago yung information, kung hindi, hindi sa mali yung information, kung hindi we knew additional information that would warrant a change in communication and a change in our perspective. And that is something that we have to handle very, very carefully. Otherwise, we would lose our credibility to our publics. Second, it's not just about the words. It's also about the messenger sometimes. Um, the IATF, um, the Interagency Task Force, they have a lot of um, nagkaroon sila ng, we had a, lot, a number of communicators. We had the spokespersons, the um, presidential spokesperson, we have the Secretary of Health, we have um, three doctors, we have an epidemiologist, a microbiologist, we have um, uh, an NCD expert, we have a general communicating COVID. But 
All of them paved way when we heard the voice of one soothing person. And I was talking, of course, of about Yusek Berhere. And it was her calming voice. It was her um, soothing voice. Um, apparently, Yusek Berhere is also a graduate of USC, right? Um, it was really her calming voice during the um, time of pandemic, which really um, suit, suit the nation. So it's not just about the message, it was also about the messenger. And lastly, ang bilis ng information, and not just information, but also misinformation. Who could remember, who could still, who could forget yung naubos yung mga saging sa palengke kasi sabi gamot daw ang saging sa COVID. And of course, one would not forget about ivermectin. One could not forget about suob, etc. We are not just fighting, we are not just communicating, but we are also fighting for misinformation. And last, I think one of the second to the last slide that I have is about um, also about cultural sensitivity. Kanina nabanggit ni Father about cultural sensitivity. I just like to also relay one story. Um, Again, um, okay, story to ni Secretary Flavier. Um, bataas ang maternal mortality sa Cordillera region. And the reason was, ginagamit sa panganganak yung buko, which is yung sa saging, yung sa bamboo, bamboo na uh, kawayan. So mataas ang mortality kasi ang taas ng infection na nangyayari. And the campaign of the DOH was, don't use the buho or the bamboo, in cutting the umbilical cord, but use the scissor. Pero ayaw gamitin ng mga tiga cordillera yung, sus, yung gunting kasi it's not natural. They would want, culturally, gusto nila gamitin yung buho because it's cultural. It's natural. Again, ang naging campaign ng DOH is, ang kalaban natin, hindi yung buho, kung hindi, hindi malinis yung bamboo na ginagamit. So ang ginawa, the campaign was isanitize yung bamboo na gagamitin at hindi ipinilit yung gunting. So maternal mortality dropped significantly after that. So not, um, it might not be um, if we could frame our campaigns also along the lines of um, cultural sensitivities of our people. And lastly, Sinabi na rin to ni Claire kanina. Information is everything, everywhere, all at once. They're happening everywhere. It's all over TikTok. It's all over Facebook. You don't have to actually wait for the evening news or for the morning newspaper. You just browse your ex, not your ex, but your Twitter. Um, meron ka ng news. So it's everywhere ang information. So this is, I think, my last slide, and I'd just like to tell you, kanina kinuwento ko, um, paano namin we were able to, how we were able to convince our clients, our patients, our nurses, our doctors, and the basic question was, um, how would Dr. Fe Del Mundo have responded if she were alive at this time? Nung nagtayo siya ng internment camp, at ng hospice ng sa internment camp sa UST, Ginawa niya yun at the time of war. And we are in a different time of war. In a different kind of war. COVID war. And kagawin din niya to. Um, she would establish a hospice care for COVID. And our doctors understood that we are just leaving the legacy of Dr. Fedel Mundo. Our um, staff understood na kailangan nila tong gawin. And I would just like to end uh, with this one anecdote. Problema namin noon was, ang fear was, baka umalis yung mga nurses, umalis yung mga medtech, kasi puro COVID yung naging, magiging patients ng hospital. It has not become a problem for Fedel Mundo. We were able to cater to our, to our patients with adequate human resource complement. Ang naging problema namin, we face several parents, maraming parents, kasi pinagbawalan na nila yung mga anak nila na pumasok sa FE kasi may COVID. 
Pero yung mga anak nila insisted na magtrabaho sa fe. And ang sinasabi, Sir, kaya nga kami nag-nurse, kaya nga kami nag-medtech, we would want to serve. Ngayon pa ba kami aalis kung kailan kami kailangan? So, again, um, just to show, um, I hope I was able to impart with you some of the challenges, some of the approaches that we did um, in FE, in communicating our health priorities, and some lessons which might be 20 or 30 years back, but are still, some of them may still be relevant. Again, isang magandang hapon sa UST community. Thank you very much, Mr. Basa. So, um, may we actually invite our first speaker to be seated on stage as we um, approach our open forum with our students. So, you know, indeed, with all the difficulties and the complexities that uh, comes with health communication, it seems that having different sectors of society work hand in hand is the best way to form health literacy among the people. And um, that is actually what we're aiming with the varied audience that we have with us here this afternoon. So before we proceed to our open forum, I would just like to acknowledge the different academic units that are actually joining us today. So if I call your academic unit, could you please give us like a simple shout out so we know where you are situated in our venue for this afternoon, okay? So we have students from the Arts and Letters, Faculty of Arts and Letters. You know, there's only one. Ang taas naman ang energy natin dyan. Students, okay. Sige, let's see. Uh, what about students from the Faculty of Medicine and Surgery? Yeah, hello. Okay, sige, they're just waving. <laughs> All right. Um, nursing, we have our future nurses. Ayan, full of energy. Okay, faculty of pharmacy. And I think we also have, hello there, academic staff also from the faculty of pharmacy. College of Science. Okay, they're here at this part. College of Commerce and Business Administration. Yes, okay, CICS. Oh, there's one outside. Sir, what are you doing there? Come on in, join us, okay? All right. Engineering. Do we have students from engineering here? Okay, there. IPEA? All right. Early birds. I saw you a while ago. Okay. Uh, fine arts and design? Okay. Architecture. Do we also have students? None. Civil law? Okay, hello. And senior high school. We have students for the... Ayon, finally. Okay, there. So at this point, we now open the floor for questions. You may approach the microphones available. And may I ask you to please introduce yourself by staking your name and your academic unit. So you might have questions. It's uh, actually I could relate to some of the points that you shared a while ago, sir. Um, the campaigns that you mentioned. I think I remember seeing commercials of those campaigns and hearing it also from my parents. So our students here are encouraged to you know ask questions uh, to our um, speaker for the first part. We also have I think some questions from our viewers from Facebook. So. If you're still thinking of some inquiries to have, you have, you might have for Mr. Basa. Allow me, sir, to read one of the questions that are actually given to us from our um, audience, from virtual audience. So, um, are there specific pieces of advice that you would like to give future health practitioners on how to laymanize or clarify? Um, health communication to make it more accessible and easy to remember for their future patients. I think the person who is asking this is actually involved in um, an academic unit related to health sciences. So if I may repeat the question again, uh, any advice that you could give on how to laymanize or clarify their health communication to make it more accessible and easy to remember for their future patients?
Okay. Siguro what I could um, suggest is um, for you to listen um, to your patient, listen to your audience, um, listen for feedback. I said that's the only way also that for you to um, effectively communicate um, if you listen from, from them. Okay, so I think uh, Ms. Claire also mentioned a while ago, no, it's a, it, listening is part of uh, health communication. And sir, in relation to that, there's another question that I think is related to the first one. Uh, also, inspired by your story, uh, accompanying your mother to the hospital, no? students are asking, if we become too overwhelmed to say, please repeat to the doctor uh, if we don't understand their instructions, what are other types of clarifications should the patient um, uh, say to their doctor, particularly when he or she wants the explanation to be easier to digest so far in your experience in working in hospitals? What are other ways that patients can do to clarify information to their doctors? Po? Um, if you could repeat to the doctor. Um, that's one um, from experience then from the, from the doctors. Many of them also, kasi from um, madalasan nilang nasasabi yung information, sometimes the details slipped into them and sometimes baka nawawala na rin sa isip. If you could ask them, Doc, tama ba if it's something like this, then many of them are, would be would, uh, oblige to explain further. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Basa. Any questions from our audience members here? Uh, from our, we also are joined by actually a very uh, good group from our counseling department. So I think they're there at the back. Hello po. Ayan po. Anyone? Okay, so um, I think later on, sir, our audience Bye. members would warm up and Sir Basa will actually be joining us again in the second part of our program. And maybe if you have um, questions later on, we can address it to sir, okay? Thank you very much, sir. All right, another round of applause to Mr. Basa. Okay, so... Um, before we actually go on our very quick break... Let us first engage our audience. I think ito medyo mabubuhayan atin sila uh, with a raffle draw. Ayana. So, our students will actually be having a chance to win some exciting prizes from the Office of Public Affairs and Unilab. We have a very comprehensive wheel of names because we actually have almost 300 participants with us this afternoon. So for the first part of our raffle draw, we will have three winners. So our uh, tech booth can assist us with uh, uh, generating our names here. The first winner of some prizes from OPA and Unilab is... Okay, let's see... Okay, we have Mr. Justin Prudente. Are you around? Are you here, sir? Just raise your hands if you are here. None. Okay, let's have another name. Let's have another name. And now everyone is suddenly excited. We have to remove his name already. Next, please. Okay. Wow, there's a gasp. Are you here, Sir uh, Kevin Crisolo? Uh, yes! Oh, hi! Okay. So, uh, just approach the desk of the Office of Public Affairs at the back to claim your prize. Let's have one more. One more name. Okay, we have Miss Serena Silva. Where are you? Are you here? Okay, again, just approach the desk uh, at the back to claim your prize. And let's have the last one for this round of our um, raffle. Just one more name, please. One more name. Okay, we have Miss Madeline C. Are you here? Where is Miss Madla? Okay, if you're not around, then more chances of winning for the other audience members. But first, we have two winners for this round of our raffle. Okay, so 
As we go on to our five-minute health break, may we invite our participants to also join our Kahoot Challenge. We have a QR code here on screen which you can scan, and there are three questions to answer. And later, we will see who are our top scorers, and these three participants will also win exciting prizes. Please take note that only the first 40 students to log in our Kahoot Challenge will be accepted. We shall resume with part two of our program after five minutes. Thank you. Sound check. Sound check.
Jesus. So, join me. Sound up, up, up. Sound check, sound check. Sound check, one, two. Sir, angat mo pa to, sir. Angat mo pa. Sound check, yan. Sound check. Sound check. Kita nak. Check sound.
May we request our participants to please take their seats as we are about to resume our program in a few minutes. So welcome back to the sixth installment of our Media Leadership Lecture Series, Zooming In on Health Communication. We are actually thrilled to have nearly 300 students here with us in person and an equally engaged virtual audience joining us live via Facebook. Quick head, heads up to all our attendees, engage with us online using our official hashtags, share your thoughts and insights using hashtag USD Media Leadership Lecture Series, hashtag USD OPA MLLS 2023, and hashtag HealthCom MLLS 2023. Don't forget to tag the Office of Public Affairs official Facebook page as you contribute to today's discussion. Now, let's dive into the heart of our program's second segment. Our roundtable discussion promises different perspectives on health communication, as our esteemed moderator will skillfully guide a dynamic conversation among representatives from sectors involved in health communication. So allow me to introduce our guests for this afternoon's discussion. Our first guest is the former Dean of the College of Rehabilitation Sciences of the University of Santa Tomas. Presently, she is an academic staff at the Faculty of Medicine and Surgery and an adjunct associate professor of the Division of Health Science of the University of South Australia. She serves as the Chief Program Officer of the Research Center for the Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. Part of her extensive experience is her stint as the president of the Philippine Board of Rehabilitation Medicine and the Sports Medicine Association of the Philippines. For her accomplishments in the field of research, she has been awarded the San Alberto Magno Award for Best Published Research and is a consistent gold awardee for research in USD. In recognition of her contribution, in the field of rehabilitation medicine, the Philippine Academy of Rehabilitation Medicine has awarded her the Visayatrist of the Year Award. In addition, she is the program lead of the PhD in Health Research in the Graduate School, which is an alternative track to the doctorate program that devotes more time to research proposal writing, implementation, publication, and presentation. Presently, her program, Research Center for Sports Medicine and Rehabilitation, has been awarded a DOST research grant to investigate various sports injuries. Let us welcome with a round of applause, Dr. Consuelo G. Suarez. Next in our roster of discussants is a licensed medical doctor who has 10 million followers across his social media accounts. Through his virtual presence, he shares with the public his public health education advocacies. A multi-awarded educational content creator, let us welcome on stage Dr. Winston Kilimanjaro Criones Tiwakin. Joining the discussion to represent the field of media and communication is a practitioner who has a decade-long experience in the media industry. She started as a production assistant and editor at Unlimited Productions Incorporated, a production company creating documentaries which air on ABS-CBN and ANC. She then transferred to CNN Philippines as a researcher and eventually became an executive producer of the Branded Content and Special Projects Department. As an executive producer, she oversees several programs including Med Talk Health Talk, a medical and wellness show which involves conversations with health experts and case studies and takes a holistic approach on discussing health. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome on stage Miss Christine Bernadette Sassi. And rounding up our roster of discussants for this afternoon, we welcome back on stage the Operations Director of the Mount Grace Network of Hospitals, Mr. Ruben Basa. Now that we have our guests on stage, allow me to introduce our moderator for this segment. She is a prominent figure in broadcast journalism, renowned for her impactful and award-winning work spanning over two decades at ABS-CBN. She's been a senior correspondent, news anchor, and host of popular programs such as News Patrol, Salamat Doc, Umagang Kay Ganda, TV Patrol, and various shows on DZMM Teleradio, ANC, and ABS-CBN's The Filipino Channel. Presently, she anchors Konekajan on Teleradio. Beyond television, she is a seasoned multimedia expert. In fact, during the pandemic, she established her own company and produces shows like OK Doc and Pamilya Talk, which are aired on digital platforms with a 20 million reach, ABS-CBN Global's The Filipino Channel, and ABS-CBN's Jeepney TV. Additionally, she contributes columns to the Philippine Star and Filipino Star Ngayon. While excelling in journalism, she concurrently led ABS-CBN's Bantay Bata 163 for four years, championing the rights of children in need. She balances all this while being a full-time mom to her three daughters. Named one of the most trusted media personalities by the National Press Club and a recipient of the Gold Wheel Award for Leadership and Public Service, we are very blessed to have with us our moderator for this afternoon's discussion, Ms. Jean Castaneda Velasco. Hello, Hello. ayun! Hello! Nako, hindi kayo pinakain ng UST. Low energy. Again, hello. Hi. Hi. Ayon, magandang magandang hapon. Uh, the last time I was in UST was ano ba? Eight years ago. I was invited. Uh, elevate, tapa ba? Elevate. It was at eleventh hour. hour. Okay, it was part of a tourism uh, college of tourism project. Ayan. And then of course we've been coordinating or. Um, with the UST team during the Pope Francis visit. Yon. I was a lead uh, correspondent there. Miss ko na ang UST, so thank you for inviting me. Ayan. So, blue eagle po ako, so sanay akong blue, hindi ako sanay na mga yellow. Pero okay din naman na yellow. Okay, so before anything else, welcome to our roundtable discussion featuring our esteemed experts from diverse fields. So they will enlighten us on various facets of health communication. So health communication is very close to my heart. So before we go into our discussion, a special acknowledgement to our dedicated students who continue to join us here no, on site. Required ba kayo? <laughs> Tumango. Required daw sila. Wag kayo mag-alala. Sulit ang pagpunta nyo. Marami kayong matututunan, marami kayong content, at pwede yung i-share sa social media. Diba, Doc Kili? Ayan. Okay. So, let's um, call on the different uh, academic units. So, shout out tayo. Okay. Faculty of Arts and Letters. Saan? Uy, palakasan ng sigaw. May premyo ba? Meron bang uh, Unilab Medicines na pamimigay? <laughs> Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. Wow naman! Ang dami naman ng sampung yun. Okay. College of Nursing. Aba. Yun ang madami. 1,000. Nandito sila lahat. Faculty of Pharmacy. Parang nasa basketball lang ah. Okay, College of Rehabilitation Sciences. Wala. Absent. Paki-mark. Absent. 
Ayan. So, sabi, hindi po hindi nagpunta sa requirement. Okay, College of Science, College of Commerce and Business Administration. Ayun! Galing naman. Parang may isang napakalakas yung boses. College of Information and Computing Sciences. College of Fine Arts and Design. Ayan na ba? Ang galing. I-draw nyo kami mamaya ah, habang nag, uh, nagde-discussion kami. Faculty of Engineering. Nakakagulat naman yun. <laughs> okay, Institute of Physical Education and Athletics. Huwag kayong mahiya, lakasan nyo pa. Ayun, okay, next. Faculty of Civil Law. Ayun, ay, nahihiya ang ating mga lawyers. Pwedeng sumigaw. Senior high. Sino mong senior high student? <laughs> Yun ang pinakain ng UST. Okay. And of course, our UST guidance counselors. And, ayun. Ako, makinig po kayo. Marami tayong mental health issues, ano, na kailangan pag-usapan. And of course, the members of the UST hospital. Yeah. Yung mga nasa online, sa Facebook page ng UST, thank you for joining us. And of course, yung mga... Uh, students, no? Nakasama po natin dito. So, um, before anything else, uh, I, I just would like to share, no? Bakit po malapit sa puso ko ang health communication. When I was small, syempre small pa rin ako hanggang ngayon, ayan, I was uh, choosing between being a doctor or being a journalist. Kaya lang, matagal po yung pagdodoktor, kaya bilib ako sa mga doktor. Diba? Gusto ko mag-MD, marriage degree. Hindi medical degree. So, I opted to... Uh, mahilig din ako magsulat, mahilig ako magbasa ng dyaryo. So, I ch chose to become a journalist. And since students kayo, ang payo ko, magdadasal tayo kung anong career na gusto ni Lord para sa atin. Kasi as fate would have it, after going through um, hard news, police, politics, etc., uh, I was given a health program sa ABS-CBN, that was Salamat Doc, and it was uh, one of the, if not the, pinak, the, the program which is closest to my heart. Uh, Doon kasi ramdam na ramdam yung public service, no? So, from then on, uh, even with the shutdown of ABS-CBN, we don't have as much news airtime, so now we need to also use uh, social media, tulad ni Dr. Kili, um, and I have as mentioned kanina, I'm producing my own shows, but most of the partners, no, uh, or most of the collaborations are with my health program. Uh, napakahalaga po ng uh, health information. Kaya very, very excited po ako na makasama tong ating mga experts and kayo rin pong lahat, no? So, yung, yung first question ko, sa uh, parang, parang, ano, no, fast talk. Lights on or lights off, Doc Bebet? Dela ko lang. Mag-walk out si Doc Bebet. De, so, kanina, nung pinabanggit nga nung ating mga bisita, no, na napakahalaga ng health information, health communication. Um, and, well, after listening to the presentations, parang magkakaroon ka ng feeling of, uh, ano ba, hopelessness or helplessness. Uh, you know, it's a, there's so many challenges facing the health industry, and more so, health communication. So, um, unahin natin si Doc Bebet. Doc Bebet, uh, given the background no, presented to us by our speakers during the first part of the program, saan you po, where, where do you think we should start? Uh, madami. Pero ang first thing that I always think of is bakit nahihirapan ang mga Pilipino makipag-communicate on health. Just one example, if you talk about ugat, di ba ugat, sasabihin may masakit pong ugat nyo. In medical parlance, ugat could be an artery, could be a vein, could be a nerve. Pero sa Pinoy, lahat ugat yun. Tapos pagkatapos, nangingimi. Ano yung gimi? May gimay, merong ibang sinasabi. Hindi tayo nagkakaintindihan because of our language. Maybe because 
Filipinos are not very health oriented. Tingnan natin ang mga Koreano, K-drama, no? Or you look at the Chinese, they have their acupuncture. Talagang ingrained sa kanila yung health, eh. So, one thing is really to understand ano ba yung sinasabi ng iba-ibang tao, ng Pilipino, sa sakit nila. And that's where research could come in, where uh, one of our faculty members tried to do that, eh. Paano, ano ba yung ugat? Ano ba yung... I'm a rehab, so flexion, extension, so nakabaloktot, nakaderecho, ganon. Doon tayo nagkakaroon ng problema, lalo na sa gra um, grassroots, especially Filipinos have how many dialects. So iba-iba lahat yun eh. So yun yung nagiging problema natin. I mean, I think that's the first thing uh, sa communication. Ano yung one thing to the other? When in medical terms, when we are in medicine, we will always th uh, talk in English and our, la our books are all in English. But when we go into practice, nag-iiba. Hindi nila ako naiintindihan. Like, you know what gulugod means? Meron ba nakakaintindi ko ng gulugod? Spine, no? Pero, konti lang nakakaintindi noon. So, ang visualization ng ginagawa namin, may drawing kami, Eto, eto, eto. So, I think very important yung visualization, yung mga um, pictures para nagkakaintindihan. Ako ay agree, ma'am, no? Kaya binanggit nga ni Ruben kanina si Sec Flavier. Uh, kilala niyo pa ba si Sec Flavier? Students. Naku, hindi na nila kilala. Si Daniel Padilla, kilala niyo? Taas, kamay. May kilala kay Daniel Padilla, taas ang kamay. Si Robin Padilla daw. Kaya. Si Sec Flavier, parang grade school yata ako nung siya ay secretary. Pero dahil mahilig na nga ako sa balita, kilalang kilala ko siya. And agree, I agree with Ruben, no, na isa siya sa, isa siya sa pinaka, o baka siya na yung pinaka magaling, no, na health communicator, no, health secretary. Anong gusto mo idagdag dun sa binanggit ni Doc Bebet? Uh, she was mentioning cultural sensitivities, primarily language. No? So, totoo yun. Totoo yun. May iba pa ba? Um, actually, siguro nga dahil cultural natin, ang dami rin nating, um, we're, uh, we're an island group din kasi. Iba-iba rin kasi yung culture ng sa Bisaya, sa Kapampangan, etc. Siguro it helps, um, it contributes into the difficulty ng um, communicating din sa iba't iba. I agree with, uh, with sa sinabi ni Ma'am kanina. And it's very, if we could transcend that um, challenge, um, malaking bagay. Okay. So, dealing with information, syempre, media yan, Christine, no? And then they were mentioning, na, uh, yun nga, language. And yung mga health programs, minsan, kasi ma'am, dahil wala ring translation minsan, or kahit ako nga minsan, pag sinabi ko bang gulugod, maintindihan ba nila? So, ginagamit mo tuloy spine, no? Pero para rin siyang uh, chicken and egg, dahil kakagamit mo ng spine, hindi tuloy nalalaman na ay gulugod pala yun, no? So, paano sa media, sa, sa, sa uh, health programs ninyo or sa, sa CNN in general, how do you address that? Um, when it comes to mga technical terms, no? Um, just to share with everyone, ang team po kasi namin, wala naman masyado ring medical experts. We only have our host, Dr. Freddy Gomez, who is also a um, medical doctor. He is an ENT specialist, so he also serves as a consultant for our show. And most of our guests normally are doctors. So whenever they have their conversations, good thing we're not live like this, but we're taped. So... One thing that we do, if for example, hindi namin naiintindihan yung conversation between the two doctors, then that means kami coming from a point of view of a patient and an audience won't also be able to understand what they're talking about. So what we do is we try to repeat that question in a way na mas maiintindihan din ng ating viewers. 
And I think what's nice about that, na hindi rin sobrang medically inclined ng team namin, is because we're coming from a patient's perspective na minsan parang ang simple ng tanong, para sa mga doktor, ang simple naman ng tanong ng audience na to. Pero kami as patient, di kasi namin siya alam. So yung mga simple ng tanong, we're able to include it in our discussion for the viewers to also easily understand. So yung paggamit ng mga salita, paano nyo, halimbawa, yun nga, no, spine, gulugod. So pag sa scripting, mas ginagamit nyo bang gulugod kahit na hindi pa siya ganun kasikat? Actually, parang wala pa naman kaming episode na pinaggamitan ng gulugod, no? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> But we normally talk about mga spine and I agree with Professor Consuelo kanina, visuals are very important oh. kasi sometimes our viewers... Minsan, very busy at home or they're doing something. But when they see a visual, like a graph or uh, an image of the body that you're talking about, and you put labels and text, that will also help them easily understand what you're talking about. Okay. Ako minsan ang ginagawa ko may translation agad eh. Yung spine o gulugod. Lapay. Ano yung lapay, Dok Bebet? Pancreas. Pancreas. Okay. Pancreas. So, pancreas o lapay. Kasi nga para makatulong ka to to educate, di ba? Kung minsan, kung ano po kasi yung naririnig natin sa at least rad media, akala yun yung totoo, di ba? Kaya pag yun parati nilang naririnig, wala silang ibang ibang pamalit, no? Doon sa salita. Pero si Doc Kili, how do you pronounce Kiliman Guru? Ano bang tama pronunciation? Yes, Kiliman Guru. Guru, okay. <laughs> at saan naman ang galing yung Dr. Kiliman Guru na screen name mo? <laughs> Well, when I was starting out, I was trying to think of a name that when they hear it, they know that they will learn something. So from my original name, na Kilimanjaro, I decided to change Jaro into Guru. So that Kiliman Guru, automatic, alam na nila kung ano yung branding. May pagana. May pagana. Paano mo naman na isip si Mulan to? Nung pandemic lang ba? Well. My pre-med is actually communication arts kasi. Mm. And it's, it's been in my heart palagi eh, yung media, you know, journalism and everything like that. Kaya when I was in medicine, I was trying to find what my purpose was, kung bakit ako nandito sa world of medicine. Because honestly, when I entered med school, it wasn't, hindi pa clear kung bakit ako nang doon. I'm like, okay, I need a stable job. I want to help others. Pero aside from that, what else can I contribute to the community? Napilitan really... ka ba? Napilitan? Ay, hindi naman, hindi naman ako napilitan. <laughs> like, love you, mom. Hindi naman niya ako pinilitan. <laughs> hindi niya ako pinilit, honestly. It was uh, my wholehearted decision naman. And I noticed during our rotations, uh, during clerkship and internship, na there were certain questions being asked by patients na parang, ha, bakit, bakit nila tinatanong to paulit-ulit? Uh, ito talaga yung alam ng lahat ng mga Pinoy. And I, may na-develop na akong script every time someone would ask the same question. And I thought, why not make content about this on social media because I'm pretty sure there are other Filipinos in different parts of the Philippines who would want to know this. Kaya, ayun, that's how everything else started na. Before the pandemic? Uh, during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. So, yung mga posts mo, visual din, di ba? May mga pictures, pictures ka rin doon. Yes, okay. when the topic requires visual images, I would put images there. Pero kung kaya naman through analogies na lang or simple metaphors, I, I don't have to put images anymore. Okay, so do you agree with uh, Doc Bebet? Medyo challenge, no? Sa health communication, yung ating pagkakaroon ng iba't ibang dialects. At wal walang, mal walang malinaw na translation, eh. Minsan kahit na media practitioners... Nag-iisip pa, paano mo nga ba i-translate to? Yes, that's why as much as possible, yung for me naman, yung language na ginagamit ko, kung kaya pang masa siya, ganun, para majority, para more than 50% of Filipinos ma ma-hit siya. And whoever man nakakuha ng information na yun can translate it into their own dialect for the people that they know. So parang creating a ripple effect. Reach as much people as you can by using the language of the masses. And from then, kung sino man yung nakareceive ng information na yun, bahala na sila to translate in whatever dialect na lang na pwede.
Okay, so balikan ko si Ruben kasi itong pinag-uusapan natin, communicating the disease, etc., etc., marami sa mga health issues ang pinanggagalingan, gobyerno, di ba? And you mentioned about Secflavier and you used to be with PhilHealth also. Yung isa sa challenges ay pagkakaroon din ng malinaw na communication from the source, no? Uh, ano yung nakikita, given your experience in PhilHealth, ano yung nakikita mong areas to improve on from the government perspective? Actually, yung sinabi ko rin kanina, um, receiving the feedback. Well, maski although sinasabi natin sa government na we listen sa feedback sa mga tao, pero yung how to calibrate, how to adjust the messaging and adapt to what actually your people would um, um, appreciate more, mas maintindihan nila. Kaya I think aside from government, marami nga talaga lumabas din ng mga ibang communicators outside of government eh, kasi yung um, it's the yung mabilis na pag-adapt um, sa message and I think yung authenticity. I think that's very important kasi nakaka-relate yung mga tao doon sa message na binibigay. Nung nasa PhilHealth ka pa, meron bang um, ano yung mga problema? Kasi hindi naman talaga ganun kadaling mag-communicate. Yes. And then may bureaucracy pa ang gobyerno, yes. di ba? And then all of those clearances, approvals. Ano yung pinaka, palagay mong paraan? Uh, ano yung dapat baguhin? Uh, halimbawa, si Dr. Ted Herbosa, I got to talk to him once. So he was saying, he wants to reorganize uh, the structure, the very structure mm -hmm. of the OH uh, to make it more responsive to the times. So, ang gobyerno ba may issue talaga yung structure or baka pwede namang may iba bang paraan na pwede namang bumilis yung communication without necessarily uh, doing an overhaul? Oh, baka kasi ano eh, it's how to connect yung talaga, yung baka how to connect yung uh, nagbibigay ng message sa tao na uh, yung sa message. Okay, baka pwede rin, pag back to basics din kasi Doc Bebet, no? Mm -hmm. uh, like kanina, gulugod, sinasabi niyo. So parang feeling ko yung basic information about diseases, uh, problematic na to start with. Iba pa yung policy, iba pa yung program, iba pa yung level ng sang kakukuha ng ayuda, bakuna, etc. Pero yung purpose ng bakuna, ano ba yung sakit na baka doon pa lang yung starting point problematic na, Doc Bebet? Actually, uh, Facebook help. Ako, sorry, mm. ako, wala akong Twitter or something. But the, um, the hospitals, no? especially mga private hospitals, meron silang uh, mes um, messages uh, like uh, we're required no, to do that for uh, QS, no? I not QS, sorry, that's uh, for education. Uh, education. Pag, uh, if we want to be having ISO accreditation, mm. one of the things that we have to do is we have to have communication through media. So, lahat kami departments, toka-toka kami na, oh, ito ha, kayo naman, anong gusto nyo ilagay? So, we give, yon. meron mga, ano yung sakit na to, tapos mga pictures ano dapat gawin etc but again ang problema ko uh, with facebook most of the people no or hospitals would be using english mm. yun yung problema so hindi pa rin bumababa doon sa mga tao mm -hmm. so kung marunong ka ng i mean that's the problem that mm -hmm. i see mm -hmm. now in other hospitals where we want it government ayaw nila Kas, ayaw alam, nila na? Ayaw nila maglagay sa social media. Uh, I don't know for all the other government, but uh, where I am now, one of the government hospitals that I am, sabi ko, bakit hindi tayo gumawa ng kamukha na ginagawa sa private, sa UST na ganun? Ayaw nila yon. So, hindi ko alam bakit. So, for example, uh, because I'm in heart center, so... Mm. Um, magaling tala, I mean, one of the, siyempre heart. Yes, so, yes. madami silang... So many new techniques talagang Correct. magugulat ka paano nila sinesave yung lives ng mga tao. Mm. Pero ang sabi ko, bakit hindi tayo gumawa ng mga ganun sa Facebook? Ayaw nila. Hindi ko alam bakit. But in spite of that, I mean, we, we really have a lot of patients. But maybe we could educate more with 
mga ganyan sa social media, no? Uh, wari, sa bata, um, we have so many children with congenital heart disease and also because of rheumatic fever, nagkakaroon sila ng sakit sa puso. So, uh, bakit hindi natin sila educate sa website natin na ito yung nangyayari? Uh, yun, yun yung mga thoughts, my thoughts as being a physician that that could help people, parang ganun. So, dapat may political will din, no? From the hospital. Ah, yeah, definitely. From political the institution. Will. Oh, oh, oh. So, Doc, may TikTok ka na ba? Ako? Mm. <laughs> Hindi po ako nag-TikTok, sorry. <laughs> Kasi, so, Facebook, yeah, TikTok wala pa? Hindi, no, because uh, I'm titingin lang ako sa mga journals on what's new on my field takes a lot of time. Hmm. Parang gusto ko, like, I opened my Facebook, tapos nakikita ko yung British Journal of Sports Med, may mga bago. So, babasahin ko yun. So, ang dami-daming kailangan basahin na wala. Sorry po. Uh, I don't have the time to mm. be there. Mm. I just wanna tell you, um, how, how many journals, no, medical article is being published in a minute? How many? Two per minute. Wow. Eh, how many minutes are there in a year? Grabe, ha? So, ang dami. Mm. So, talagang information overload mm -hmm. po talaga. So, yun yung aking ano, magti-tiktok ba ako o magbabasa ako <laughs> ng journal? So, yun. Okay. Hindi, may, kaya ako nga tinatanong, baka pwedeng joint project yun, no? With, uh, with the COM Department of uh, UST. Kasi sila yung may expertise and may time. Baka pwedeng one of their... Uh, Internship required uh, uh, Actually, projects. I'm in research, and I've seen so many new things done in the university on mm. research. Ang sinasabi ko nga po, bakit pa wala tayong ganyan na, mm. for example, we have different researches. Bakit hindi sila mag-join and then make it into something na lalabas sa Facebook or TikTok, sorry, or Twitter, para nalalaman nila na may ginagawa tayong bago para sa mga Pilipino. O yun, pwede yung mga malakas nagpapalakpakan kanina, lagot kayo. Nag-notes na yung mga professors nyo, kailangan tumulong kayo. Kasi yung information ay nasa mga eksperto. Ba't tama si Doc, no? Wala naman silang panahon para gumawa ng creative, no? Creative output. So the students, the youth, kayo po yung may panahon eh for that, no? So baka yun yung isang collab na pwede gawin. So Doc Kelly, Nagpa-practice ka pa ba ng medicine o puro ka TikTok, Facebook at ano, YouTube? Yeah, yes, that's what I would like to talk about then. Kasi okay. as Doc was mentioning, no, para pag practicing ka talaga, you really spend so much time reading new information. Because there's always new updates about health. So in order for me to be able to give my full time into educating the public through social media, I am not really practicing traditionally as a doctor. So I'm, I've am i put my full time and effort into content creation. Kailan ka that's how much I love the Filipino people. <laughs> Kailan ka nag-stop from practicing? Well, right after I passed the physician licensure exam, I dedicated myself na into content creation. Okay na kay mommy. Hi, mommy. <laughs> Hi, mom. Actually, pinaalam ko pa yun sa kanya. Sabi ko, ma, um, hindi mo na ako mag-residency, ha? Uh, bigyan mo ako ng one year and see where this content creation career takes me. And I've been in the career for three years na, so hindi na ako mag-residency. <laughs> Ano sabi ni Mami? Uh, well, she's incredibly proud and I'm happy na she supported naman the path I decided to take. Okay, so diba abangan natin yung panahon na biglang gugustuhin mo nang mag-practice, no? Tingin mo dadating araw na yun? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Sana iakyat yung ano, sahod. Uh, charit, joke lang. <laughs> ng residency, charit. Ne, pero tama ha, yung mga nasa uh, medical field dito. Actually, si Doc uh, Willie Ong, uh, he, he used to be with us, ha, sa salamat, Doc. Sa naalala ko, kwento ko lang. Uh, ako actually nagturo sa kanya paano mag-Facebook Live. Kasi nga, uh, by, I've always treated social media, my Facebook, di pa uso nun yung monetization, ganyan-ganyan. Mm -hmm. Pero 
That was my, the extension of my public services. So yung mga stories ko sa patrol, sa, not just salamat dog, but lahat, lahat ng mga kwento, story reports ko. Nilalagay ko sa Facebook. That's why it grew organically, no? So after salamat dog, kasi syempre that's the property of ABS-CBN. I do my separate interview. So interview ko si Ruben. Ano ba yung mga sinabi mo tungkol sa ganito ganyan? So, Si napapanood ako ni Doc Willis, si Jing, ano ginagawa mo? Doc, mag-Facebook ka kasi hindi naman lahat nakapanood ng salamat. Doc, ang aga-aga natin. So sa Facebook, makikita nila yon ganyan, ganyan. So yon so binilihan ko pa siya ng mic, no? For nung time na yon di pa uso yung mic for the, for the iPhone. So anyway, so until eventually, hindi na rin siya nagpa-practice <laughs> kasi... Oh, di ba? <laughs> Nung tumakbo na siya, di ba? Laki na ng following niya. And yun nga, it takes so much time. No? Hindi ganun po kadali. Uh, so, yung ibang paraan ng, ng pag-practice no? ng medicine, itong content creation. Um, pero it, as far as, Christine, sa, mas matagal siyempre sa TV shows, di ba? Ang pagbuo. Hindi ba nagkakaroon ng... Ano yung nakikita mong difference between content for... TV, long form, and content for uh, the social media as far as health is concerned? Um, I think the main difference is the duration, as you mentioned. Kasi nga, in social media, minsan in a matter of 15 seconds, 30 seconds, you're, al you're already able to get your point across the audience. Pero in our case, in the TV na long format tayo, when it comes to our programs, it's around 18 to 21 minutes. So that's very long. So it's also a challenge for us to be able to sustain yung attention span ng ating mga viewers. That's why we make sure that the topics we produce are also relevant and relatable for all of them. Ano yung nakita mong dahilan? What's the purpose? Why do you still need to do these kinds of shows? Kahit na, sabi nga ni, ni Doc Bebet, eh, di ba? Siya mismo bilang doktor, sa Facebook din siya tumitingin, di ba? Nang latest, ng mga balita, and then also health uh, advancements. Yung mga programs like this, of course, not just MedDoc, HealthDoc, but all the other health and wellness programs across all networks, I feel that it's really crucial na meron tayo on TV that something can be reference of our audience. Kasi nga, one of the challenge, I must say, nabanggit kanina ni um, Mr. Ruben, um, health literacy. It's one of the challenge na nararanasan natin because there's still a lack of information and lack of understanding among the viewers. And lack of uh, understanding, dinagdagan pa siya ng stigma. Minsan, yung mga stigma, meron talagang mga preconceived notions ang mga Pilipinos when it comes to certain diseases. Like, makita pa lang nila a person, kunwari may scaly patches sa skin, ay, huwag tayo didikit siya, nakakahawa. Or, meron siyang pinagdadaanan na mental health issue. Laging tabu topic or sasabihin ng iba, especially the older generation, ay, baka nababaliw na to Bakit ganyan yan? So, napakaraming misconceptions and one way to be able to correct them or debunk those kinds of misinformation and misconception is through repeated awareness. That's why it's very crucial na merong mga ganitong programa that people can rely on. If hindi sila agad makapunta sa hospital, hindi naman alternative yung mga programs namin, no? But at the same time, it can still be a guide for you to know what to do or what specific doctors to reach out when you're encountering mga certain conditions. Sige, tanungin ko yung ating students. Sino sa inyo ang nagbabasa ng Jario? Taas ang kamay. Jario, Jario. Jario. Okay, wala. Sino ang nakikinig sa radyo? Radyo. AM. FM. Alam niyo pa bang FM? Di niya yata alam mo FM. Saan ang FM? Taas. Ah, very good. Okay. Sino sa inyo ang nagbabasa ng balita sa pamamagitan ng Facebook. Taas ang kamay. Facebook. Ayun. Okay. Sa pamamagitan ng Twitter. You're, get, you're able to get your information because of Twitter. Okay. Information through TikTok. TikTok. Taas ang kamay. Through TikTok. So marami ang TikTok at Facebook. Okay, so marami ang TikTok and Facebook. So yung binabanggit, uh, yung binabanggit nga ng ating mga uh, bisita, like Christine, no? 
uh, may iba-iba kasing purpose at may iba't ibang audience, no? So, dito pa lang sa grupo natin, iba-iba yung kanilang puntahan for information. So, that's why, sabi mo nga, these programs on TV are still important because they're, they're people who still get their primary information on TV. And yung traditional media talagang mas uh, credible because of the process, the vetting, diba, that goes into it. So yung mga, pero ang tanong ko, Christine, yung show nyo ba, after ng show, do you repurpose the material? Ine-edit nyo ba siyang mas maiksi? Diba? Para tulad nung kay Doc Kili na 2-minuter o 5-minuter siguro for YouTube, 2-minuter for TikTok, or yung long form yun na yun? Um, actually, our materials which air on TV, they're also available online. So for viewers who are only on Facebook or YouTube, they can also watch our programs at their convenience. The whole program is available there. Um, we also have short plugs of the program, and then sometimes, depends on the topic, we also create short pullouts. We call it pullouts, pero around two minutes pa rin. So it's still longer than the ones that are available on TikTok. Pero what's good is the full episode is available on Facebook and YouTube. So if you're busy and you don't have to wa time to watch on TV, you can still access those topics because they're forever online naman. Anytime, no? It's yes. there. Okay. Si Doc Kili, Doc, yung mga, do you get uh, collaborations or sponsors for your posts or your content? Yes. Okay. Paano mo yung, paano mo, uh, how do you balance, syempre, the financial part with the ethical part uh, of your content, of your posts? Yes, well, for me, I make it a point that 90% of my overall content is not sponsored. And I make sure that if I do say yes to a particular sponsor, is that it aligns with my values and, and principles. So we do say no more often than we do say yes to sponsors. Kasi may mga nag-a-approach na gluta, collagen, like, sino ba itong mga nag-a-approach sa akin? Di ba nila pinapanood yung mga content ko? They know that I'm against those products as whitening products, as beauty products, and herbal supplements pa. So to ensure na I don't lose the credibility from my audience, I have to show them na, no, 90% of this is not sponsored. So natural pa lang yung mala porcelan ng kutis? <laughs> ano na, derma. <laughs> Chara. <laughs> Der derma lang. <laughs> Napaganda yung binanggit mo, no? Kasi importante yung... May, may ano ka ba? May, um, what do you call that? Uh, transparency? Na this uh, post is sponsored? Or et cetera, et cetera? Yes, definitely. It's uh, very obvious na sponsored siya. Because if they watch my non-sponsored contents, I don't really mention any brand. Kasi wala taglang brand mention at all. So the time na I do mention a brand, that's when they know na it's sponsored already. Okay. Oh, kasi very important yung sa health communication, yung ganyang transparency, yes. di ba? Uh, Lalong-lalo na, I mean, even sa atin sa TV, kahit na sponsored siya, very careful sa pagsabing cure-all. Minsan, cure-all kasi yung, yung promotion ng mga supplements, etc. No? And uh, no, I just have, had to mention that kasi Dok Kili, sa laki ng following mo, Ikaw ngayon yung kanilang, sabi mga guru, pero mabigat yung binibitiwan mong salita uh, yes. sa bawat post mo, di ba? Uh, mabigat yung iyong responsibilidad no? yes. sa, sa kanilang lahat. Uh, sabi nga nung, um, nung nagsasalamat do kami noon, minsan, sin, kasi minsan po, Doc Bebet, yung mga doctors, yun din yung challenge, no? You need to be creative, sabi nyo nga kanina, no? in explaining yung sakit. You need to be patient pag hindi naintindihan ng pasyente, ng nanay, ng tatay, kung ano yung sakit ng anak. Kung minsan kasi pag technical masyado, tapos nahihiya silang magtanong. Sabi nga ng Unila, huwag mahihiyang magtanong. Um, oo lang sila, oo, hindi na naintindihan. No? Kaya minsan po, kami, kami noon sa Salamat Dok, minsan pag kami nagsabi, naniniwala yung pasyente. Pag yung doktor yung nagsabi. <laughs> Wala pang Facebook kasi no, no? So, kasi siguro mas naiintindihan nila pag sinabi nung mga, uh, tulad namin, nasanay na sa mga lengguahe kung minsan, no, ng mga pasyente. Anong, ano naman, dok, ang pwedeng gawin ng mga doktor? ba? Ano yung nakikita nyo? Hindi po lahat tulad ninyo, eh, na 
you know, you go out of your way diba, to study and then uh, isinasamasa yung inyong napag-aralan, yung research para maintindihan ni Juan de la Cruz. Ano kaya yung pwedeng gawin? Sa, you know, medical field, no? As a profession, pwede bang merong sa mga, sa mga kurso? Pwede bang may com arts subject parate Or I don't know. <coughs> Actually, kasi naman, uh, when we're in medicine, meron kaming tinatawag na comdev, community development. Tapos, ang nangyayari doon, pumupunta kami sa mga areas, um, not, I mean, um, yung mga, not squatter, but those areas, tapos kailangan magturo ka in their, mm -hmm. ano, uh, kasama yung health education yon. So, tinuturuan kami makipag-usap sa mga tao in their language. And, of course, it's siyempre sa USD, puro, ano, Tagalog, no? Mm -hmm. So, that's part of uh, that's part of our education hindi lang basa ng basa pero paano mo sasabihin sa tao paano paano ka makikipag-usap sa kanila and then the other part naman is how could you become more adept because of so much information overload that's why we have our conferences no uh, very important sa amin yung conferences kasi uh, lahat ng bago naging digested in two, the, two days. So, naiintindi, ah, ito na pala yung bago. Ito na yung bago. So, yun, uh, the, what Dr. Uh, Mr. Basa said, sobrang bilis ng medicine ngayon. Because of COVID, everything is so fast. So, we have to keep up with the times. And that's how you would help your patients. Parang yun. Oh, yung everything, everywhere, all at once. Diba? Na sinasabi nga. Yung mga, yung, si Ruben, yung binabanggit ni Doc, no, na, kasi sa hospital ninyo halimbawa no meron bang uh, paraan or i don't know if there's an effort for the doctors lalo na yung medyo may edad ma'am di ba hindi naman lahat kasi kaedara ni Doc Kili uh, na mag or ganun ng ganung orientation na uh, the importance of being visual di ba mag i mean kay si Doc Willy kaya patok si Doc Willy kahit noon sa salamat no pag ininterview namin siya may prop siya parate bitbit -bit niya Tuturo niya pag in-interview mo, ito yung puso, ito yung uh, balun-balunan, ito yung ganyan-ganyan. Meron bang ganong education din sa mga doktor na, huy, kailangan, di ka lang matalino, magaling ka rin magsalita, at paano nila gagawin yun? Ang maganda lang sa naging mix namin di sa federal mundo na doktor, marami kaming mga um, old-timers, hmm. pero meron din kami mga bago. So, with the, yung mga bagong doktor are able to um, na they were able to share practices kung ano yung what works for their patients. Kasi sometimes, katulad ng sinabi mo, um, some doctors are also having difficulty communicating o kaya siguro dahil madal madalasan nilang nasabi o kaya siguro, um, siyempre generation, mga doktor mo nasa 60s, 70s, tapos yung mga pasyente mo in their um, mga bata, they're able to share their experiences. Meron bang, baka it's a good idea to, ano eh, to... Uh, kasi tulad nun, si Doc Kili, siguro dahil bata ka, kaya madali para sa'yo yung gumawa ng graphics for your posts, etc. No? Pero yung mga ibang doktor, actually, kahit yung kaedaran ko eh, yung mga hindi kami digital natives, di ba? So, inaral namin yun. So, baka pwedeng meron silang ganun ding session, I don't know, tutorial, <laughs> workshop, ano Doc, ano Doc Bebe? Actually, yung sinasabi kanina ni Doc, yung mga programa, Meron kami noon, we post it sa social media. Pero talagang actually challenge din sa amin, mami. Eh. Kasi like for example, meron kami package na uh, minimally invasive called cystectomy. Hirap kami. Magsasabi, ipopost namin sino mga kaintindi. Kami-kami lang din, yung mga doktor lang din namin. Pero yung mga, nan, yung mga gusto namin makaba, makaintindi kung ano yung MIS na call eh, hindi, ang hirap. <laughs> hirap challenge talaga. Maraming, ano, marami talagang balakid, no? Challenges. <laughs> yung, yung, actually, inisip ko nga, sa tinagal-tagal ko rin na, uh, yung PhilHealth noon, sponsor namin sa, sa DZMM, no? Sa ilang taon na, pero parang, bakit pare-pareho yung tanong nila? Ilang taon na yung programa, yung questions sa, di ba, tatawag sila sa radyo or magpo-post na, ah, sa, sa telepono, magpo-post sa Facebook. Parang it's the same questions nga, no, na, hindi hindi tumatanim sa isip nila kung ano yung ano yung sagot doon sa kanilang tanong no so yung mga so you're saying even from the hospital's uh, standpoint 
it's difficult also. It's also challenging. Anong nakikita mong pwedeng kasagutan dun, Christine? May magagawa ba ang, ang media to support? Kasi mahirap nga yung for them to take it on themselves lang, no? With the guests that we have, yung mga ganyan pong ka, kakalalalim na mga detalye, eh, nahihirapan din kaming intindihin, kaming mga producer. So, kami na mismo yung nagsasabi sa kanila na pag po ba nirephrase na atin siya, maiintindihan po ba natin ng mga viewers. So, as much as possible, they try naman to explain it in layman's term para mas maintindihan ng viewers. Kasi, I remember, minsan din kasi yung mga doctors, my personal experience with some of the doctors, uh, for my personal checkups, I would also bring my notes and then I would listen to the doctor and write down notes. And my doctor would say, you don't have to write those notes. Um, you'll understand them by heart. But sometimes I don't. Kasi nga, the way they explain yung mga medical terms, it's really hard for a patient to understand. Lalo na kung ikaw yung may sakit. Parang you're not, you're not physically well. And then you're bombarded with all these medical terms. So I think there should also be patients coming from the doctor naman when they're communicating to the patients. Kasi minsan nga po yung mga pasyente natin, let's understand that they're, they're not in the best of health. Kaya they also couldn't comprehend what we're trying to explain. But with our programs, you always make sure na yung mga technical terms, we avoid those technical terms. Or if they're mga term na hindi natin maiiwasan, we make sure that's our visual representation and there's a supporting explanation, not just from the doctor guest. Means and our doctor host also expounds on it para lang mas maintindihan. Do you ever have um, partnerships with DOH Halimbawa or with PhilHealth with the government for CNN Philippines? Um, we don't have specific partnerships with the government, but sometimes we also have partnerships with specific brands or organizations. Uh, we, we tap them onto the program, depending kung ano yung mga topics. Okay. Yung business side din kasi, no, ng uh, pag, pagkakaroon ng TV show, di ba? So, y kaya ko tinatanong may partnerships. Means, yun din yung political will na papasok, eh. Na kung minsan, kahit na walang bayad, like, kunyari, ikaw, Doc Kili, walang bayad, but you're putting out, you know, these contents. Importante rin, eh, na we should give them airtime. Kami nun, issue kasi yun, eh, sa sa radio minsan. Huwag niyo masyado habaan yung interview sa PhilHealth kasi meron yung, meron yung paid, paid segment eh. So, pero importante, bigyan mo sila ng free airtime kasi kailangan ng tao yung informasyon ng DOH, ng PhilHealth, etc. No? So, may, may ganun bang, not in your program, pero dun sa ibang programs ba ng CNN Philippines, may ganun pagkakataon naman? Um, well, my department with CNN Philippines is called Branded Content. So we also have partnerships with certain brands or organizations. Even for MedTalk Health Talk, if there's a specific brand who wants to be part of the program, um, they're welcome naman. But normally, ang mga guests po kasi namin ay doctor. So we don't allow the doctors to really promote yung brand na, na pag-uusapan. So, Usually, the discussion is more about the benefits, kung ano yung meron sa produkto na yun. And in terms of visuals, we just show them on TV so nakikita ng viewers what product they're talking about. But for the doctors, they're not supposed to mention it because we don't want them naman to promote mm -hmm. that certain product. Okay, so through the TV shows and through your content, uh, that's how you try to reach no, the masses and give them the information that they need. Uh, Doc Bebet, sa mga doktor, meron bang, are you, do you have any ideas how can you also do the same thing as a group? Kasi hindi lang yung individual, no? On a patient-to-patient -patient basis. Actually, uh, I was doing some research on the importance of barangay healthcare workers. Very important. Kasi sila, during the COVID times, my experience was, we had COVID in the family, no? And then the barangay healthcare workers took care of us. Di nila kami sa, yung mga kasama ko sa uh, paswab and everything. And there's a program by DOH where they provide uh, basic medicine, metformin, para sa diabetes, para sa high blood. Tapos nag-instill uh, sila ng exercise. Tapos paano yung pagkain. And it's because of the barangay health care workers. So I think grassroots level, kailangan turuan yung barangay healthcare workers. Pagturo, kung ano bang high blood, 
ano ba ang heart disease, kailan ka pupunta sa doktor, pag ganyan. I think that's very important. I think that's one part of health that we are not looking at. No? The grassroot barangay sa barangay, kasi nagbibigay siya ng gamot eh. Libre. Hindi lahat alam yon. So, uh, through LGUs, kung pwede lang, my thoughts, no? Kung pwede lang turuan talaga yung barangay healthcare workers para matuto sila, kuha ng blood pressure, temperature, mag-inject kung kaya, yung mga ganun. Ako ay agree, Doc, no? And uh, uh, we've had